Procrastination is caused by the fear of success. No, if you did it, you'd win and you'd be better. So I didn't do it so I could be my comfortable self. Next thing I knew, the opportunity passed. It felt so good just to be me again. All I'm saying about vulnerability is that when you are in uncertainty, when you feel at risk, when you feel exposed, don't tap out. Stay brave, stay uncomfortable, stay in the cringy moment, lean into the hard conversation and keep leading. Stay brave. When it comes to being the person you want to be, what are you waiting for? What are you waiting for to get started? If this journey that you want to go on is something that you truly are passionate about and committed to, then waiting for everything to be perfect is absolutely the wrong answer. Getting started, taking that first step, that's the answer. Nobody starts out as an expert. Nobody starts out as a tremendous athlete or an incredible piano player or the expert in their field. They all start at the very beginning as a novice. They commit to the craft and they spend the time necessary to get to where they want to be. Understand that your story is being written as we speak. Oftentimes we wait until we see some sign or some alert, a notification on our phone that tells us a guy, that opportunity, that relationship, that big break you've been praying for, it's coming. But that's not how life works. Good stories have plot twists in them. And up until this point, maybe every plot twist of your life has been negative. Family members got sick or passed away. Got fired from a job, the business deal fell through. That just means you're due for a positive plot twist. Make no mistake about it. It's coming. So keep your chin up. Stay ready. Your story is still being written. The magic that you're looking for in your life is found in the work that you are not doing. The supernaturalness that you are wanting in your life is found in the sacrifices you're not making, the community you're not in, the generosity you're withholding. You're gonna to have to confront fears. You're gonna to have to do stuff you've never done. What matters most is how you walk through the fire. You can walk through the fire complaining along the way, or you can walk through the fire and create an example for everyone else so that the trials and tribulations of their own life seem trivial because they're comparing themselves to the way you handle things. Potential is not what you can achieve. It's who you can become. There's a saying, if you're too focused on results, you'll never change. But if you're focused on change, then the results are inevitable. If you achieve success without changing, you will not hang on to that success. Because maybe everything on the outside changed, but nothing on the inside changed. Pray to become the person who can achieve and sustain success. Potential is all about who you can become. And really what you need to do is just get off the couch and take that first step to whatever that journey is, wherever you want to be. Start it today, not tomorrow, not once I get something done. Start today. Take the first step, no matter how small, no matter how ugly, no matter how imperfect. Take that first step because that first step is the beginning of getting you to the end. And it's the journey, it's the getting there, it's the falling down along the way and getting back up and dusting yourself off and learning through failure and growing through challenges instead of going through them that will make you the person you want to be on the other side. Greatness is in you, but you have to take the first step to find it. Believing in something worth fighting for is when you unveil the true meaning of strength. The true realization of how it feels to carry on past the point that once broke you. Remember? Now look at you, fueled by the fire of faith and belief that no matter what darkness throws at you, no matter what setback or excuse doubt has for you, you have an unshakable resolve that you are a warrior. A warrior of the light. You are the catalyst of cataclysmic change. You are the one with words that will change the world. Because you are guided by something greater than any enemy can challenge you with. Like, I can't say this enough. Stop waiting. You could get hit by a bus next week. Do not waste your life waiting. 
worrying or wishing for things to change. You got to want it enough to do the work. I prefer to be the kind of person who steps up and faces the challenge than the kind of person who stays below the line and avoids the challenge. What kind of person do you want to be? What do you want? How badly do you want it? How much are you willing to suffer? Learn how to handle the winters. They come right after falls with regularity. Some are long and some are short and some are hard and some are easy, but they keep coming. You must learn to handle the nights. They come right after days. You must learn to handle difficulty. It comes right after opportunity. You must learn to handle recessions. They always follow progressions. See, it isn't going to change. The lesson you must learn is how to handle it. And there's all kinds of winters, right? The winter when you can't figure it out. The winter when it all goes smash. The winter when it turns belly up. The winter when it won't work, when you've run out of money and you've got a broken heart. See, those are winter times. Don't waste the failure. Because oftentimes, what do we do when things don't go the way we want it to go? We throw the experience away, right? But we learn more in moments of defeat than we do when we get the victory. Because when you get the victory, nobody can tell you nothing. But when you lose, you listen. After you lose, or when you get knocked down, stay down there for a minute. Understand why you lost. What were the reasons? Why are you down here? Why did you lose? Why did you get knocked down? Because if you just jump right back up, you're going to lose again and again, and you're continue going to lose the same way. So every time I lost, I stayed down for a second, minutes, hours, days, weeks. But when I stood up, I was different. If tomorrow was not a guarantee, how far would you push? If you thought that today was your last opportunity to ever do the thing, how far would you go? How far would you go? How fast would you run? How much would you sacrifice knowing you're never going to lace it up again? You are willing to make the decision with the mindset. What if it does work out? I think at some point in every person's life, there is that collision between somebody else's expectations and hopes and dreams and yours. You have to have a lot of passion for what you're doing. And it's totally true. And the reason is, is because it's so hard that if you don't, any rational person would give up. It's really hard. And you have to do it over a sustained period of time. So if you don't love it, if you're not having fun doing it, and you don't really love it, uh, you're going to give up. What if? A lot of times I'll be in a tour at my run or something like that, and I'm all jacked up. Body's broken, mind's broken, spirit's broken. I start to say, what if I can pull this off? It's the what if I can pull off a fucking miracle? What if I can become someone that no one thinks I can be? When you, when you say you're going to do something and then you follow through and you do it, not, not, not at the end when you, you know, you cross the marathon, you finish it, or, or your hands raised. I'm talking about right now. The small steps in between the big successes that everyone sees. No one sees this. Don't panic. Right now, this is a rebuilding stage. You need to stop looking at everything that's going wrong and start looking at everything that can go right tomorrow if you put in the work today. No more excuses. No more blaming other people for the hand that you're dealt. Take ownership of everything in your life. Move past the negative thoughts that tell you that you can't. You can get back everything else, but you can't get back today. So make it count. Your setbacks are actually things that set you up to win. You're amazing, you're phenomenal. The pain doesn't come, but it also reveals a greater side of you that you are more than the things that have happened to you. And you're more than things that are going on inside of you. You just have to discover that there's a purpose for it. Use it for that purpose as fuel to get to the next level.
Those who are great are grateful. The difference is there are those who say, I have to put in the work, and there are those who say, I get to put in the work. One of them is going to put in more work, put in more of the small details into their craft, and they're going to get out a whole lot more because they're grateful to be there. You must hold yourself accountable and being your hero, that's what that does. You make yourself so totally accountable for who you are. You focus on you and only on you to become the best person you can be for others. Because we leave a lot on the table, not searching who we are. And then therefore, you die not knowing your greatest potential. You will become whatever you're fascinated with. You always become whatever you're fascinated with. This is the law of mind. If you become fascinated by poverty, you become poor. You become fascinated with sickness and the reports of all kinds of diseases, you will become sick. Whatever you become fascinated with, you'll get it and it'll get you. This is the law of mind and it works with anything. So do not become fascinated with what you do not want. If you want to be wealthy, become fascinated with wealth. Become fascinated with wealthy people. If you want to be successful and prosperous, become fascinated with successful, prosperous people. The only way I lose is if I quit. It's going to be a dog fight. So if you're ready to quit, then don't get started. If you're ready to quit, don't get started. If you're looking for this easy path, don't get started. If you think they're not going to close the door on you and say no a million times, don't get started. But every time they close the door, I just get excited. Why? Because I am not a no. I'm one yes away. I want to share with you is to wake up early and stack wins. What I mean is we need to start stacking little wins. Most of you out there think that success in life is a byproduct of big wins. Like I got to make that deal. I got to get that sale. I got to start that partnership. And the big wins are important too. make no mistake about it. But I'm here to tell you that the little wins stacked every day, every hour, over time, over days, weeks and months make you a gangster of a human being. Discipline. People use that word so loosely. You have to sacrifice loved ones in order to be great because they don't understand. I am getting up every single day at 5 or 6 a.m. And when I get home after everyone leaves the gym, I'm going to take a nap. So now you're sacrificing your loved ones because you're not spending time with them. And when I wake up, I'm probably going to train again. And then I'm going to have dinner. And then I'm going to bed. And I'm going to do that every single day for a long period of time. That's sacrificing and discipline. Most people will not understand your obsession, your drive, and your determination. Success is a lonely journey. That's just a reality. And most people are not gonna understand why you're so driven, why you're so obsessed. And if you try and make them understand, you're gonna end up frustrated. The best advice I can tell you is, go on the journey by yourself. In the battle, you find peace. When you go to war with yourself, you find a lot of peace. It's because you know exactly who you are. And that is where the peace is really found for me. When a hero stumbles, well, the cowards rejoice. Nothing feels better to a coward than to watch a brave guy fall. This life is not here to make you suffer. This life is here to make you understand what is your potential. Maybe there is something bigger that you can become. This is also meaning discover your potential. You may be frustrated with where you are right now, but think about the story that you can tell later when you're where you want to be. If you're working some shitty job right now, or you're broke, or you're in debt, or you just got fired, it sucks right now. But one day, this will be a chapter of your life that you'll not only be grateful for, but one that you can use to inspire other people. So before you start feeling sorry for yourself, remind yourself of the story that you're going to tell later. Knowing how far you've come and being able to tell that story is going to be worth whatever you're going through right now.
you got two choices. One, you get scared, you give up, and then you burn up. And the second one, you say, like, fuck it, fuck it, fuck the chair, and you barrel through it. And when you come out on the other side, I guarantee you, you're gonna be stronger than you ever thought possible. You lose more life trying to optimize everything than just living it. The yeah. stress of trying to be perfect is killing you more quickly than your imperfections. I will never wish for fewer epic stories at the end of my life. And I've never regretted failures. I've always regretted things that I didn't try. Dreams have a purpose, but those dreams are not necessarily to be fulfilled. They are a vehicle that gets you moving. Very easy to stay in that realm of comfort with the people at the bottom, but you'll never fly high enough. You may have to go at it alone, and you may be your only supporter, but that's okay, because that's the most important supporter. That's the one that you can rely on to put in the work every single day, despite what you're going through, because it's hard to rely on people, especially ones who don't see the vision. This is one of the best questions, I think, to ask yourself when faced with a decision, which is, what would you tomorrow want you today to do. You might be dealing with a lot right now, and it might be easier to hide and run from it all. Don't. Embrace the storm. Let it harden you. Because on the other side of the struggle is a version of you that is stronger, healthier, and more unstoppable than you ever thought possible. Running away from the challenge won't get you anywhere, but showing up for yourself, even when it's hard, will. Stay strong, you got this. There's a self in you that wants to come out, that's there, that's buried within, that will feel better. When we bring it out, we feel better. The lower self is our animal nature. When you're bringing out the higher self, you're becoming human. Your lower self is your addictions. You're always wanting something easy and fast and quick. And when you indulge in that, you don't feel good. You want to bring out that higher self. And I want you to confront that and not deny it anymore and see that that's in you. It's in everyone. It's not like, Every human has it. It's extremely democratic. Ultimately, happiness comes down to the decision of choosing to become aware of our mental afflictions or choosing to be ruled by them. This is what hard feels like. Did you think the thing that you wanted to try and achieve was going to be easy? No. Okay. So what's the entry price of trying to achieve this thing? Well, it's hard. Like you are here to be challenged by things. This is what hard feels like. You can be very grateful for what it is you have right now and still be ambitious with goals and dreams and visions that you want for yourself. And in fact, being grateful is part of being happy along the journey. Being happy along the journey takes three components. It takes gratitude, it takes a mission, and it takes discipline. And if you have those three things operating in your being, you're going to be happy along the way. That's reality. Do it sad, do it angry, do it heartbroken, do it miserable, do it excited, do it energized, do it happy, do it tired, do it confident, do it discouraged, do it anyway. Life is not just the passing of time. Life is a collection of experiences, their frequency and their intensity. Life is not just watching the clock tick away. Life is a collection of experiences. Their intensity, their frequency. Whatever the span of your life turns out to be, here's what you want to fill it up with. Experiences and the intensity of those experiences. Success without fulfillment is the ultimate failure. Because the human mind is not going to make you happy. This brain of yours won't do it. You have to direct it. And there's no worse fate than to achieve everything and not be fulfilled. There are a lot of voices in life trying to define us, tell us who we are. Sometimes they're uplifting, a parent telling us that we're talented, we can do great things. Other times they're negative. You're not attractive. There's nothing special about you. 
you made too many mistakes, you missed your chance. When you listen to all these voices, it's easy to think, who's telling the truth? Who am I? Here's the key. The only voice that matters is your voice. The fastest way to change your life is to start keeping the promises you make to yourself. You chose this, and even though it might be hard, you still owe it to yourself to see it through. Don't live with regret. Put it all on the line and let it play out the way it's supposed to. The last thing you want to do is wonder what if. Don't give yourself that option. Make it happen now. Understand this, keep rebuilding yourself in private, but make sure when you come back, you come back an absolute beast. Most people spend their entire lives wishing it was easy, wishing it was fair. It's not fucking fair. Wishing it would line up to be perfect for them. And because they're waiting for this and because it's never coming, they never go. And when they never go, they never become anything. And that's what leads to a, a wasted life. Conditions are never gonna be perfect. Things are always gonna be hard. The only hope that you have is to become someone who can push through that hard regardless of what the f is going on. And if you can build that level of discipline, that level of mental toughness to execute when things are not ideal, when things are extremely hard, nothing can stop you. How many really uncomfortable situations are you putting yourself in that challenged you, that grew you, that pushed you to get to that next level of being who you are? Are you under the illusion, and I love you as a friend, but I think sometimes you're under the illusion that you're going to get these external things you want without growing who you are. You could not be further from the truth. In fact, if you were to acquire those things without growing who you are, we understand the power of identity. You will eventually lose those things because they're not congruent with who you are as a person. Do all that you can do. And when you've done all you can do, and hell still comes to breakfast, let it finish out, then pick up the pieces, learn from it, and start all over again. There's a, a really great quote from Mark Manson where he talks about the most important question to ask yourself is what pain are you willing to endure in your life rather than what pleasure do you want? Because any pleasure or any pursuit that you want is going to come with an in-kind payment of pain. Beautiful thing about life is that you get to choose your heart. Everything in life is hard, but you get to choose what your heart is. It's really hard to live a life of purpose working on something you care about. It's also really hard to live without purpose. You get to choose the thorns that you're going to have on the path of your journey. It's something that I think about constantly. It's like, how can I just endure this a little bit longer? How can I just embrace this hard of whatever it is that I'm going through? And the right choice is you can either go out and build your dreams, go through all the hard shit, get knocked down a million times, get punched in the face a million times, get told your shit by everybody that you love and everybody that's around you, get made fun of, get laughed at, get picked on, become the joke and continue to move forward and then build your dreams and let your life speak for itself. Or the other choice is you can quit and you could be worse than what you were when you started trying to be better. Don't talk about what you're going to do. Don't just dream about what you're going to do. Don't criticize somebody else for what they're not doing. You be it. Be about it. Be about that action and go do it. Keep your eye on your intention. Don't let any outside distraction or your own insecurity stop you from your goals. Embrace that struggle. Surviving that struggle will strengthen you. What can one man do except forgive his best? If you fail, you try again. If you win, you try again and get better. So as long as you maintain and you stay consistent, you'll forever be a winner and a champion in the people who love you in their eyes because they support you nevertheless as long as you're trying again and again and again. Legacy that you leave has got to mean something to somebody. We got to live for something bigger than ourselves. Some people will tell you that you don't need to change, but they're wrong. Because in order to achieve the things that you want to achieve, 
you have to destroy the current version of you. Improvement and growth is change. You can't expect to get the things that you don't have if you don't change the things that you always do. Change is inevitable. You either progress or regress. The choice is up to you. If you're not being defined by a vision of the future, then you are left with the memories of your past and you'll be predictable in your life. If you're not creating anything new, that means you're believing in your past more than you're believing in your future. So then if the person is living in anger, impatience, resentment, frustration, and they're holding the intention of their future, there's no vibrational match between anything and their future because they're saying, why hasn't it happened? They're waiting for their success to feel abundance, waiting for something outside to change how we feel inside. And if, if you're living in that lack and you know that you're creating your future, you're creating more lack. And if you're reacting to the people and conditions in your life that are all known to you, then your thoughts and feelings are equal to everything that you know. You keep creating the same life. It, it is simply you are thinking a thousand different thoughts in one hour. You are doing around 500 different actions in that hour and experiencing 20 different emotions. And when you think about it through that lens, it is now this finite structure that if you live with a complete intention to use your thoughts with intention that lead to intentional actions that create the feelings and emotions of joy for the majority of your life, that little framework right there is how you can literally take control of time and ultimately create a harmonious existence for yourself. Really look back and think about all the things that led to you reaching those moments. It's going to be the tough times. It's going to be that depression. It's going to be that anxiety. It's going to be that heartbreak. It's going to be that setback, that injury, whatever it is, that loss. All those things, right, in the moment felt like the end of the world. You're going to look back in hindsight and see how they were actually building you up in a way that you just couldn't see in that moment. Remember, there is nothing in this world that can hurt you as much as your thoughts. And there is nothing in this world that can heal you as much as your thoughts. most important conversation is the one you have with yourself. You wake up with it, you walk around with it, you go to bed with it, eventually you act on it. The fact is that you're more amazing than you've ever imagined. You're more qualified, more gifted, more useful, more meaningful than anyone has ever defined or told you you could be. There are times where you've tried to talk yourself into believing your value by looking in the mirror and you haven't gotten the right reflection because you haven't said it with the right inflection missing out on everything because you're waiting for someday you're waiting for someday to feel ready someday for it to be perfect someday well I'll tell you what today is that someday if you want to attract what you want you've got to see yourself already with it you don't get what you want you get what you are you've got to become what you want you've got to realize the minute you hold your mind in harmony with the good you want then you've already got it. It's only a period of time till it manifests in physical form. That's called the perpetual transmutation of energy. That is a law, the first law of the universe. How badly do you want it? You've got to pay a price to be the best. The best pay a big price. You've got to work harder, you've got to commit more. You've got to take more responsibility. You've got to deal with more ups and downs. If we can deal with that question, how much do you want it to suffer? The size of your dreams must always exceed your current capacity to achieve them. If your dreams do not scare you, they are not big enough. If you start off with a small dream, you may not have much left when it is fulfilled, because along the way, life will test your dreams and make demands on you. Be the hero of your own movie. If your life was a movie, and it started now. 
Forget about whatever financial disasters you've had, personal failures, relationship failures. What would the hero of your life's movie do right now? Do that. Do those things. We define ourselves far too often by our past failures. We look at our past and we say, well, that's me. That's not you. Spin the block, man. Spin the block. It might not be your day. It might not be your week, your month, your year. Spin the block. Knock again. Knock again. Keep calling. Keep showing up. Keep doing what you've been doing. It's going to pay off. You don't see it right now. But I promise you, I promise you, it's happening. The roots are growing. The roots are growing. The fruits are coming. I never ran track, but I've always heard that like if you ever want to be faster, you got to run with a bunch of people who are way faster than you. And there's something that happens with us as humans. When you are surrounded by those who are superior in their performance than you are, you're bound to be lifted up if you're as ambitious. If not, yeah. you're wasting everyone's time. You're more than a ripple. You're the one that will cause waves in life, but you got to keep going. There's a thing called flow. You have to get into it, and the only way to get into it is to get through the things that try to interrupt your flow. Your development as a person, your whatever it is you were born to do, you got to find out that one thing and invest yourself in it so much so that you got to hold stock when everyone tells you that it has no value. You matter, and you always have mattered. Success is something you attract, not something you pursue. Success is looking for a good place to stay. So instead of going after it, you work on yourself. Personal development. See, the major question to ask on the job is not what are you getting. The major question to ask on the job is what are you becoming? You want to know the secret to achieving everything that you dream about? Don't quit. See, when you know what the destination is, there's a million paths to get there. And it took me a long time to learn that the greatest moments of growth and success happen right after you feel like quitting, but you don't. That's the secret. Keep going. Don't even panic. Don't panic. Don't panic. Right now, there's a rebuilding stage. Right now. Right now, you have a chance to rebuild. Look, go on. Because what you're doing is you're looking at everything that went wrong. But you're not looking at what's going to go right tomorrow. Once you sit back, just sit back, write everything down, write your list, write that list down of where you want to be, who you want to be, where you want to go. Look, look at the world, look around you, look at your environment and say to yourself, what do I need to move out of the way in order so I can get to the places I'm trying to go? Your skill set is being developed under pressure, under denials, under rejection, under the people that have told you no. Those no's are things that you need. It needs you to fortify and believe in yourself until you can get to the point where it doesn't matter what anyone else says. You believe it with all your soul that I matter, that I was born to do something, and the greatness within me is going to touch other lives. You're not here just for you. The gift that you have is to be presented to God at the end of your life, and when you present it to Him, He'll ask you, how many other people did you bless? How many other people did you give it to? Because the one thing you don't want is regret. Not with the dash that we have. Our lives are way too short to live it just for us. That's why people have scars. They're a reminder in their memory. There's something you get past and there's something you live through, but at the end of the day, they're almost there. All fools in life have one thing in common, according to the Stoics. Seneca says what they all have in common is that they're always getting ready to start. They are delaying to live because they think they have the future. They think they have forever. They say, I'm not ready, or they say, I'm going to do it after. I'm going to do it once this thing happens, when conditions are more favorable. They never say to themselves, I'm never going to do it. They say, I'm going to do it later. But no one knows what the future holds. No one knows how much time we have left. Life is happening right now, this second. In fact, the time that ticks by, the Stoics say, belongs to death. It's dead. It can never be recovered. So don't be a fool. Don't delay. You could be good today. This really reminds us. Instead, you choose tomorrow. You have to work harder than you think you possibly can. You can't hold grudges. It's hard. And it doesn't matter how you get knocked down in life, because that's going to happen. All that matters is that you got to get up. What you do is you should become passionate about your gift. 
Quit tripping yourself out. You all have one. God gave all of you a gift at birth. When he created you, he put it inside of you. It, you don't got to go discover it nowhere. It's E-R-E-R -E gave it to you. It's the thing you do the absolute best with the least amount of effort. That's your God-given gift. Just got to recognize what your gift is. That's all it is. You messed up. Now what? What do you do now? Where do you go from here? Is there, is there a tomorrow? Is there a tomorrow? Well, yes. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna lay some things out for you. All right? If you've messed up, the very first step, the very first thing that you've got to do is you've got to stop. Whatever it is you did, don't do it no more. Identify your God-given gift and go pursue that. Then I'll tell you what changed my whole life when I finally discovered it's all risky. The minute you were born, it got risky. If you think trying is risky, wait till they hand you the bill for not trying. If you think investing is risky, wait till you get the tab for not investing. See, it's all risky. Getting married is risky. Having children is risky. Going into business is risky. Investing your money is risky. It's all risky. I'll tell you how risky life is. You're not going to get out alive. People are telling you to set goals, and I get it. That's a great mindset to have. But I'm gonna tell you something, that's a dangerous mindset to have. Because a lot of us, we set our goals based upon our experiences, not off of our capabilities. And what I mean by that, a lot of times when we set goals, we limit ourselves. Goals are something that you reach. Let's be real, how many times have you reached a goal and then you got complacent? How many times have you reached a goal and then you fell off? Because you got comfortable, because in your mind, your mind says, I've arrived. And the truth is about life, the ones that really meet the greatest version of themselves, the ones that really live the greatest life, they never arrive. They understand life is not about arriving at a destination. I found that nothing in life is worthwhile unless you take risks, nothing. Nelson Mandela said, there is no passion to be found playing small and settling for a life that's less than the one you're capable of living. Person who has purpose in their life, they have something to go for, some meaning. One writer described it, for some people, it becomes a magnificent obsession. But it has to be something that does something to us, something that pulls us, especially into the future. You know, there are many influences on us. One is the influence of the past. Some people are always pulled back, back, back by the past. Some people are always pulled aside by the distractions, the distractions. But here's what's powerful. If you have a list of high purpose in your life, it pulls you toward the future. And the more powerful the purpose is, the stronger it pulls. See, we want to grow, but we want to stay liked by everybody. I was willing to be my own rescue at the risk of your approval. But most of us aren't like that. We want to be liked. Well, I woke up and I like myself today, so your like is extra. My, my job is to like me first. I was willing to say every day, Lisa, you like you? Lisa, are you proud of you? Lisa, are you playing full out? Every day before I checked in with anybody else. Everything that's happening to you is God is processing. Every difficult moment you're having, he just processing it. Everything you're going through is preparing you for what you ask God for. And if you need to be tough when you get to where you're going, then he gonna toughen you. He gonna let you have some trials come your way that's gonna have to produce that in you.
it's a big difference between a hard worker and somebody that works hard. Right? Most cats are somebody that works hard. If the situation and the circumstance is what they want it to be, they're going to come out and they're going to act accordingly and they're going to give you everything they got. But a hard worker? Regardless of situation, regardless of circumstance, regardless of what happens, I'm going to show up and I'm going to give everything I got to it because I'm working for something that's totally different. Right? The question becomes this. Can you be committed to the process of what you're doing without being emotionally attached to the results of what you're doing? In other words, if you don't get what you thought you was going to get, will you still be the same individual? It's not that life is better than you think. Life is as harsh as you think. It might even be worse, but you are way tougher than you think if you turn around and confront it. Everybody's got a dream. Everybody's got a goal. What's the plan? And when you're trying to do something that you're truly passionate about, there is no plan B. When it doesn't make sense, logical sense to go on, that's when you gotta use your emotion. That's when you gotta use that anger, that frustration, that fear to push yourself harder. To push yourself to say, I don't stop. You gotta override that emotion with the concrete logic and willpower. You fight the weak emotions with the power of logic, and you fight the weakness of logic with the power of emotions. Life is suffering. This is true. And it's worse than that, because it's suffering contaminated by malevolence. That's the baseline. But the optimistic part is that you are so damn tough, you can actually not only deal with that, you can improve it. You are not alone when you think about quitting. Everyone feels that. Understand that what lies beneath your feelings of quitting is a fact. The fact is, you only feel that way. You don't have to. The fact is, if you will get up and try again, you will find that you have a reserve tank that you haven't tapped into. But the only way to do so is to get empty. Reserve tanks aren't there for when you're full. They're there when you're feeling empty. I realized that it really is choices. Our choices determine whether we become losers or winners, not our circumstances. I'm gonna say that again. My circumstances should have set me up to be a loser, but my choices made me a winner. Success is the only revenge. As you expand, they shrink into irrelevance. As you get louder, no one can hear them. You don't beat them, you cast a shadow so big, no one can see them to begin with. Get away from these people that's in your life that ain't doing nothing. Get away from them. If it was raining outside at three o'clock in the fucking morning, if it was snowing, the first instinct is don't go out there and do shit. My instinct was we gotta fucking go out there. Anything that was fucking horrible in my life that I would normally say no, that was inhumane to most people, I had to go do it. Most people go through life never discovering what their talents are. Most people never develop their talents. They have skills and abilities, but if you don't nurture them, if you don't develop them, they will never serve you. Your gifts can take you many places. If you develop your gifts, you have something that you brought to the universe. And that if you decide that my life deserves my developing, this is what I do well. And becoming the best at it and mastering myself and seeing what I have within me. If you decide to drop your buckets where you are and develop your gifts, I grant you, you'll never ever be without. You will always find what you look for, period. And if this is true, what are you looking for? Are you looking for a reason to continue pushing through the hard times, a reason to pick yourself up out of the dirt, out of the dark? Or are you looking for a reason to justify quitting? 
this ability to find what we look for. This is the human condition. This is our superpower. Our ability to find hope when there seems to be none. And when you feel it, rely on the fact that you've overcome things in the past. Remember your resume. Remember every win that you've ever had. Remember every time you've overcome every obstacle. Remember that you have a name of victory behind you. That name of victory is your history. So the question is, who should you defeat in the final analysis? And the answer is, you should defeat your former self. You should be constantly trying to do that. Could you be slightly better tomorrow than your currently flawed self? And you might say, well, what's the right way of being in the world, if there is such a thing? And it's not acting according to a set of rules. It's attempting continually to transcend the flawed thing that you currently are. And what's so interesting about that is that the meaning in life is to be found in that pursuit. You have to lose your fear of failure. Failure is a part of the process. Your mind has to be stronger than your feelings. There's a voice that guides you through life. And sometimes it's guiding you in a direction that you don't want to go, that's usually the right place to go. Don't go around telling people what your story is. Everybody has a story. 80% don't care and 20% glad it's you. It doesn't matter about what happens to you. What matters is, what are you going to do about it? Life is one big psychological warfare that you play on yourself. You play on yourself, man. The most important conversation I ever had my, with, is, is with myself. If I'm a man of my word and I make a promise and I keep it, that means I commit to the things and to the people that I've committed to. But beyond that, I keep my promises to myself as well. Remember, your reputation is not just what others perceive of you. Your reputation with yourself is also known as your confidence. Every time you were counted out, you stood up. You may not believe it, but you must. Look in the mirror and remind that person that you are a victor, you are not a victim. You are someone who can overcome a situation. And every time that you have feelings that feel like they are overwhelming, you must remind them that there's a fact that you are not alone, let the world see who you really are. You say to yourself every day, it's possible. You say that every day to yourself, it's possible. And if you ask yourself the question, what am I looking for? And the answer is you're looking for a reason to stay down. You will always find it. As you look toward the future, if you decide it, I'm not going to allow my fears to stop me. What would your life be like? What would your future be like if you decided to, to want that which you desire so strongly that it prepares you past your fears? Feel the fear and do it anyway. And I'm saying to you, that all of us who have been entombed by fear have the capacity to resurrect ourselves. We all live in this bubble. What you gotta do to get the life that God wants you to have, you gotta put more air in your bubble. You got to blow your bubble up. Expand yourself. Take yourself out your comfort zone. Do not live in your bubble. Put some more air in your bubble. If you stay in your comfort zone, that's where you will fail. You will fail in your comfort zone. Engage. Engage. Weakness is strong. I must be stronger. I must crush it into submission through force of will. I'll do it or die. See, that's powerful. That could be the day that turns your life around. The world has a strange way of stepping aside when somebody says, I'll do it or die. The man says, I will climb the mountain. They've told me it's too high, it's too far, it's too rocky, it's too difficult. It's never been done before, but it's my mountain, I will climb it. Promise yourself you will never give up. 
Be you. Embrace being you. Embrace being different. Embrace the fact that you enjoy doing what others won't do because it's the thing that separates you. And there will never be a person on the earth that can do exactly what you do. It's been said that the graveyard is full of talents that never, ever got seen. There are abilities that the world will suffer from never having seen manifested on the face of the earth. That's not true with you. Don't confuse movement with progress because you can run in place and not get anything done. So are you moving forward and who you're taking with you and how you made things better by the God-given talent that you all have in whatever area it may be? You can say I'm committed, but until you eliminate other options, you're not committed. Yeah. A lot of people make decisions to end relationships to quit their job, but they don't become committed to the decision until they remove the other options. And then you're forced to take action on it. And I think there are two different instances. It's like, I need to change this, and then I do change it. And the making the decision is when it becomes a commitment. Again, courage does not mean you're not afraid. Courage means you're afraid, but you do it anyway. I don't negotiate with myself. That pattern of thinking is what destroys most people's lives and their dreams. You got time because you got another breath coming. And the fact that you just took one means there's another one coming. There's a purpose in your life. And the uniqueness that you bring to the table is about to open up doors of opportunity. And when someone says, what do you bring to the table? Instead of saying, I am the table, you tell them I bring the table and the chair of opportunity. And those that sit around me will find there's a difference inside of me and I make a difference inside of them. Don't allow yourself to ever become common in this common world. Not when you were born to be excellent. Not when you were born to be different. Not when you were born to change the world. And the world will say your name because you changed everything. I need you to believe the fight that you're in is worth fighting for. I know you've been cut. I know you've been beat up, bruised, blood, sweat, and tears, and maybe you're on all fours lying in the dirt right now. But you have to believe that it's worth getting up just one more time. Because if not now, then when? And if not you, then who? It has to be you. It has to be you. Not your mom, not your dad, not your friend, your brother, sister. It has to be you. We have to always remember our purpose will always be there, but the purpose is myself. Your mind has to be stronger than your feelings. On those bad days, when you think that you're alone, you just might be, because you know why? No one else wants to f do it. So you be the m that always gets it done. My message is to keep going, don't quit. There's something deep inside of each of us or something deep inside of you. And often when we're walking a path, an unknown path towards a goal or a desire of our heart, there's really no idea or landmark of where we're going other than it's different and it's scary and it's unique. And there's so many unknowns. And my message is keep walking, like don't quit. If you can't walk anymore, to crawl, drag yourself, do whatever you have to do, but don't quit. Learn how to handle the winters. It's a fact of life, the winters follow the fall, the harvest. Winter comes after fall, night comes after day. Difficulty follows opportunity. Recession always comes after expansion. So the winters are gonna come. The winter of sickness, the winter of disappointment. The winter of devastation, social winters, economic winters, personal winters when your heart is smashed in a thousand pieces and the nights are unusually long, it's simply called winter time. No one's been through what you've been through. No one's had to endure what you've had to endure. Single mother, single father failing grades in class, still trying to be a student athlete, still trying to just make ends meet. 
accepting more responsibility as an older sibling, playing the role of parent. It's not easy, but it's not supposed to be. And these challenges, these trials, these pitfalls that have brought you to your knees, it's not meant to break you, it's meant to make you. Life is rough. There are days in which you will find yourself taking a step back. But just because you step back doesn't mean you can't move two steps forward. If you have to take a step back, you can rest assured that you have the knowledge of stepping forward because you've done it before. The step back is not a failure. It's a setup. And when you get set up, you can step up. When you've gone through something, you become something. If you want to face greatness, you must become the face of greatness and no one becomes great without facing something. Decide every day where you're going to put your best efforts, where you're going to focus your energy. Every single day, you must design your focus intentionally. God has a plan for you, but make no mistake, so does the adversary. And when you are not intentional with your time, intentional with your choices and your resources, when you don't drive your mind and your heart down the right path, trust me, there will be more than enough distractions to pull you off your course and away from your purpose. There's something inside you, there is something that is calling from the depths of your spirit, recognizing that you're meant for so much more. And that looks different for each of us, but we all have it and we all know it and we hear the call. And sometimes we're distracted. Sometimes life throws so many things at us that we can't hear it. But in those quiet moments and those opportunities, it's there. The one major question I got was, how do I finish where I start? I get two weeks into it and then I stop. So this is the thing about it. I want to tell you what people don't want to tell you. Why you stop is because you're lazy. It's because you don't mind getting bad grades in school. It doesn't bother you enough to be mediocre, to be average, to sit around and watch people do great things. You don't mind it. So there's your answer. Your answer is, you don't care enough about yourself. When people can't get up in the morning, I'm gonna tell you why. Because they can predict the feeling of everything that's gonna happen in their life. And their body's resigned to the familiar. It says, oh, another mundane day. But remember when you were a kid and you were going on a field trip? What happened then? You were up and dressed and ready to go before your parents were up because you knew something unexpected was going to happen. That's how we should live our lives. Waking up with the understanding to expect the unexpected and something unusual should happen in our life as a result of our efforts. Everything you already have, because what you have is substantial. The ability to dream is a blessing. The fact that you have an opportunity to get it right is another blessing. The fact that you have any measure of health, that's another blessing. But here's what you can do. You can get stronger, you can get wiser, and you can get better. The winters won't change, but you can. And that's how life changes for you. When it was hard, I used to wish it was easy. I didn't know. Don't wish it was easier. Wish you were better. Don't wish for less problems. Wish for more skills. Don't wish for less challenge. Wish for more wisdom. We always have choice. You always have choice. You can look at your life and recognize there's things you want to change. You can look at your life and recognize it's not where you want to be. And you can choose to be different. And that looks different for each of us. Sometimes it means just getting out of bed. Sometimes it means just getting up when you fall down. Sometimes it's these big, bold decisions and other times it's the small, simple things, those shifts that allow us to be great. You can also stay where you are. You can be comfortable. You cannot make that choice to be bold and to step into the unknown and to be the same way you are now. The journey is the gift. Being uncomfortable is the gift. 
And it doesn't get easier, we get stronger. You get stronger. My message is don't quit. Whatever you do, don't you quit. And let this come home. Your life is the exact reflection of the choices you have made. Love your life? Great, you've made awesome choices. Hate your life? I'm sorry. You've made bad choices. But the good news is, you're in control. It's time to take action. It's time to take action. It's time to get your reps in. It's time to take the center spotlight, grab the mic, and come off of mute. The time is now. No more waiting. There is something inside of you that has to go through a loss so that you can learn from it. You can't even appreciate victory until you've gone through something. I want you to win. I'm cheering for you to win. But in order to win, we must get in the fight and have setbacks so we can learn from them. Because bigger moments are coming. There are times you can feel like you're losing the battle. But if you win the war, did you really lose the battle? You have to start developing that personal self-esteem. And it, it has to be something that, it's an internal thing. And it has to come from a lot of hard work and dedication. You have to start callousing over that victim's mentality. You have to start building this mental armor that no matter what anybody says that you can be in a room full of a million people and all million can be like against you and calling you names and whatever, and you like this, you know what? <laughs> Roger that, you can go f yourself, man. I know exactly where I'm going.